Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Here we are today back at the Liverpool-Manchester route here in uh, Train Simulator Classic, and we are looking at the Express to Liverpool. This is basically the uh, same service as the Express to Manchester right here, but apparently a little bit harder uh, and uh, in the other direction. So we're going to be heading uh, all the way along the entire route from Manchester to Liverpool. Again, a full route run, just like the uh, other one up here. Uh, the only difference is that we're going the other way. Uh, there is one more scenario which I'm going to be looking at for potentially for Tuesday. Uh, that one is the uh, waiting for freight scenario that I just highlighted there. So I'll highlight it again, waiting for freight is the one I'm going to be looking at for Tuesday. So for right now, we are looking at the Express to Liverpool. And uh, we're going to get these uh, last two scenarios done. And once these two are done, we're going to be able to come back to the route for the uh, other trains here. For example, the 101, which is up here. We have the 142 Pacer, which I've already seen on Huddersfield. And uh, here is the 45 Peak, which uh, also has uh, iterations of it in Train Sim World as well. In fact, one of them on the Huddersfield route because it's an 80s route and the 45 runs on there. So there you go. Uh, so we have uh, different ways we can look at that train as well. I definitely want to look at the 101 and uh, obviously I have to come back for the 142. So I got a lot to do here. And I think there's an Armstrong powerhouse set of scenarios, a 156 on the standard tab as well that I need to look at at some point once we uh, look at the 156. But for now, let's continue with the... Uh, there is to come with the route itself, Express to Liverpool. I actually have not yet put the Armstrong Powerhouse model of the 158 into these uh, scenarios yet. I might do it for the morning, for the waiting for freight scenario. I haven't decided for sure yet, but I might do it for that one. In any case, let's get going with the Express service today. Good evening. Your train is bound for Liverpool with the following stops. Manchester Oxford Road, Warrington Central, Widnes, Hunts Cross, Liverpool South Parkway, and Liverpool Lime Street. Roger that. And we're going to get our train ready to go here. So allow passengers to board here at Manchester Piccadilly before continuing to Liverpool. That is easy enough to do just by doing that. And that's reset. And as soon as the conductor says go, we will go. Nothing else to report here. Headlights, I believe, were already on. They were on. They're back on. And we're going to remember that we have a lot of leeway in terms of uh, timing on these scenarios. At least we did on the first run. Uh, we'll see about the Warrington Central area. That was the tightest part of it. Other than that, we should be good. So let's get on the way, leaving Manchester Piccadilly for uh, Manchester Oxford Road as our first stop today. I'm going to leave the throttle right here at 18 and change for right now as there is a downhill approaching Manchester Oxford Road. That is surely at what I'm seeing going to give us some speed. So we need to watch ourselves here. There it is. You can see the speed. So in theory, we could continue past 20 right now and uh, go normally, but we do have a 20 coming up. So I'm just going to leave ourselves targeting 20 as our eventual speed. Even though we can now go 35. I'm letting the speed increase past for right now just because it doesn't affect us right now, but I will be bringing the speed back down. It will need to come back down, even though we do have a 35 right after the platform. Kind of silly to set it up that way, but that's what the uh, original route developers did. For some reason, it's 20 in the platform. We're approaching flat ground now, so we should be okay for in a moment for our... Uh, it's still 1 in 100 right now, but we should be getting flat in a moment. Yeah, now we're starting to flatten out nicely. So we're now pulling into Manchester Oxford Road. I've eased off the brake to a level one brake application. I'm going to actually go ahead and coast a little bit because we are... We do still have plenty of time here. Now I'll go ahead and I'll stop where, where I can see the green signal. Just to make sure nothing changes. So here we are at Manchester Oxford Road, Platform 2. leaving Manchester Oxford Road 
our next stop is Warrington Central. We have about eight or nine platforms we're not going to be stopping at along the way. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll apply some subtitle text in the editing process to uh, label them as we go by. I do know the first couple offhand, and I'm going to be uh, trying to refer to those ones to give an idea where we are. So in the meantime, we are entering A35. We're going to go ahead and start moving our speed up to 25 because that is a speed limit that we have up ahead. That'll do, 24.8. We should have plenty of time for the stop at Warrington Central. You can see the 85 long, long in the distance here. This is Dean's Gate. Now I noticed my speed starting to increase, which is what I was watching for. We are, are on a downhill, one in 101 gradient so uh, I do want to make sure I don't speed past 25 when we are in that little zone that is 25. Why this little zone is 25? Well you can see why we're taking a junction right now this is considered a 25 junction. I believe that was the uh, line to the Chat Moss route uh, hosted on another website that um, went off there that's the Chat Moss route that went off. Right now I'm playing with my thrall to find my way to the perfect spot for getting speed and holding power. I'm holding at 28.3 right now, which seems to be the maximum on a level 4 or a 57% application. But I am gaining a little bit of speed on the downhill and losing it immediately. You can see the sun setting to our west. Because that is where sun set. And it's more light than sun, to be honest with you. That is a class, I think that was a class 47 freight train going by right now. That almost became dangerous. I went to increase my speed to uh, get a little burst into the uh, 30 range. That brought it back down to where I thought it was going to pause and then it decided it was going to try and keep going. So I had to turn the engine back off. The throttle that is back off to hold the speed there. Ooh, I caught a speed increase just in time there. Did you see that? We hit a downhill gradient, very, very steep one. Now we can go somewhere. Let's go. Don't care about the gradients now. They're fine now. Let's move. So we should be seeing Manchester United at some point coming along here. Is that actually it right there? I don't think it is. No, that's... Um, no, that is Manchester United. Yeah, Manchester United is up there. So there you go. So we're going to keep this view zoomed in for just a moment so you can see uh, how we know it's Manchester United as well. Another way that you know. We're going to see a track veer off to a platform connected to that building. And that is the uh, Manchester United Football Club station. So you see the junction going over. If we were going to stop at the station, we would take that. And there is the station itself at Manchester United. And the red signal at the end of the platform. And then the track will merge back in. There's also a... Uh, I think that's a metro route. I'm not 100% sure that uh, goes off there. But I remember there's a metro route that serves the uh, stadium as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if the metro line also can use that station, just wouldn't be allowed on our main line. Wouldn't surprise me at all.
So we may or may not have already seen a metro line going off to the left. That would lead to the Trafford Bar area. Near Deansgate, we also had Cornbrook and Panoma before the metro line despawned itself. Here's Trafford Park. And I'm going to go ahead and include subtitles from this point because I'm not going to remember all of them. I know Earlham, Flixton uh, are a couple of the stations there, but I don't know what all the stations are offhand. And uh, rather than just go to an iPad, I'll just go ahead and add the information because I do not remember all of them. It will be a while before I ever remember all of them. We're approaching 80 miles per hour at this time. I'm watching that little downhill gradient up ahead. Maybe I'll cut off my speed a little early just in case. We are now on a 1 in 920 gradient. That won't really affect our speed at all. But we are on it. And there's an uphill stretch up ahead that we are going to be concerning ourselves with. So we have about 10 miles to go. We also have about nine minutes to go. So we should be doing okay for our timing at Manchester Oxford Road. As long as we get a good stretch where we can go 85 without having to slow down, we should be, be, be doing very well. Yep, we're now hitting the uphill stretch. I was gaining speed until I hit that stretch, but I'm okay with my speed where it is. There's a downhill coming up right after it, so I probably want to lose some speed. And that's exactly what I just tried to do. There is the downhill increase I was expecting. So I've eased off my throttle back to a 57% where I shouldn't be gaining speed at my uh, current configuration. We're getting warned for a speed drop anyway, so I'm going to drop it right down to zero. Looks like we're going to be going down to 65 eventually. So we are on a 1 in 135 downhill gradient. I'm a little confused what we're being warned about. We, I guess that's the board warning that we can disregard because it looks like we don't have any drop in speed up ahead like I was warned. So we're going to go ahead and just maintain 85 until we're told otherwise.
Now, I do see a 75 up ahead. That is the speed I have to go down to. And I will get ready to do that. Knowing we do have a downhill gradient leading up to that 75. We are within five miles of, of uh, Warrington Central. I was about to say Manchester Central. That's not the case. Warrington Central definitely is. We also have about uh, almost two miles across the map at this point. So uh, we are two miles away from seeing Warrington Central at the end of our map. I hope you're enjoying this Liverpool-Manchester content. I've been uh, enjoying this route. Uh, I am looking at uh, continuing uh, my Huddersfield and uh, I should say my Manchester experience, my Manchester, Leeds, Huddersfield, so on and so forth experience by uh, taking a workshop scenario. If I can get this break to apply, there we go. By taking a set of workshop scenarios that I've found on uh, my searches. And it covers three different routes, which this is one, Huddersfield is another, and then there's the DPS version of um, the... Um, East Coast Main Line. So I'm looking at covering those three routes on, or I should say rather in a class 802, which will be a nice little change of pace for this route. Keep an eye out for that at some point. That will be probably a full week of uh, videos when I do that. In the meantime, our journey to Warrington Central, or Warrington yeah, Warrington Central continues. I can't remember all of a sudden. It's right in the corner of my screen, dum-dum. We're going to have to drop to 65 and before we can go back up to 75. Not sure there's much point at that point. Because our station will be right after the 75. So rather I maintain some of my speed before I have to drop it. Coming up on two miles to go. There's a signal before the station. Station should be about very shortly coming in. The green, there it is. So that station just went by as the last station before we have to make the uh, right curve, or, sorry, the left curve here, if my memory serves me correctly, on what would be called the Warrington avoiding line back in the day. Trains that were not stopping at Warrington Center would take that line. Nowadays, all trains just go through Warrington Central. I think it's a stop for pretty much almost all trains, too. Except perhaps for ones like the 802 we're going to be driving. Maybe, maybe it doesn't stop there. I don't know. So as I said, I'm not going to increase my speed back to 75. There's absolutely zero reason to do so. It just means I'm going to have to... Uh, Put on a harder brake to come to a stop. That gave me a heart attack for a second. But that was warning for a 40. As I heard that beep, I looked up and saw the red on my microphone. I'm like, oh yeah, that's... That just... Uh, I just had a, a moment, as almost a supernatural moment for a second there. Thinking I was getting the signal in my uh, eye. But no, it was a warning for a speed reduction that comes after the platform. Therefore, it doesn't really apply to us. We're not getting any kind of a signal at the station. So we're going to drop our speed anyway. Because we have the time. We might as well do it, right? We don't need to rush. You don't get bonus points for being early. Man, the sun in the cab is annoying. I know, it's slicing the station. I'm just joking. So we're going to continue at a slow pace right now towards the end of the platform. Then we're going to hit the brakes again right now. we got a whole minute to make our stop, so I'm just kind of coasting along to the end. We're going to keep the green signal in the window just to remind us that yes, we can go.
Perfect. Arrival at Warrington Central, platform number two. Leaving Warrington Central, our next stop is Widness. Witness is a little over five miles away from our present location. We can go up to a 40 kilometer or sorry, 40 mile per hour speed limit. Now I'm doing kilometers in mile territory, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Didn't quite get to 40. I was stopping at 29 there for a moment, so I'll make sure we get to 40. And eventually 50. I'll hold here for a moment. 36.6 .6 is good for right now. Why it's doing that 85% throttle, I have no idea, but it's doing it. Now we can cruise up to a higher speed. So we're going to do that now. So 50 is our speed limit. We're coasting at a 46 right now. 46 and change now, 47. See a very interesting orange light in our cab. That's coming in the window somewhere. Effects like that that make the world seem more real. What do you mean it's real? Did I miss something? So we're going to be passing the Warrington West area, which is not simulated in this DLC. We're going to be seeing Sankey for Penketh, and then we're going to come to uh, Witness. This would be saying Kiefer Penketh. So we're on a 1 in 158 uphill gradient. It's slowing our speed increase right now. We're stuck at 76, going very, very slowly up to 77. There is a signal at the top of this incline, which will lead to a downhill stretch that will allow us to gain the speed to get to our speed limit. However, there's a very good chance, even without thrall, that we could exceed it. So we're going to be very careful coming through this area.
Here is Widness coming up. I just see I've gone ahead and taken the throttle off. I have lots of time to get to my stop. If you assume I'm going a mile a minute, I'll be there in less than a minute. And we don't have to stop till five after. Is that six after? No, five after. So we're going to start hitting the brakes a little bit right about now. It doesn't have to be a heavy brake application yet. Just a light one is fine. We're just going to make sure we have control over our stop when the time comes. That's really the only objective to braking early. Now within a half mile of the station. I put a little extra brake power on right now to bring the speed down to a little more manageable level entering the station. 30 is about where I wanted to be and 30 is now where I am. Okay, easing off the brakes for a moment. I did use another step two application. We don't have any signals at the uh, platform end. We just go when we're done. So we're gonna stop here at Witness and we're gonna open our doors for another passenger stop. Leaving Widness, our next stop is Hunts Cross. I think we need to address the passengers. Ding dong. Attention all passengers, be advised that we have run out of muffins in the cafe car. A homeless man uh, came on board, grabbed them, and ran. We apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you. Now you may say to me that uh, we don't have a cafe car. You're absolutely correct. Use your imagination. Hunts Cross is now a little less than four and a half miles from where we are. So we're going to be scheduled to arrive in about uh, five minutes. And given we are not really getting our speed up to 60 miles per hour very quickly, this is going to make it a little tighter of a stop than I was hoping for here. Still doable. Just wasn't what I was planning for. which is also the slogan for your third child. Not what you were planning for. I jest, of course, when I say that. I can make the same argument about myself with my family. Not what they were planning for. So I'm making this uh, video today knowing that we might potentially have a bit of a uh, interesting situation 
in uh, this area. We're due to get some kind of an ice storm or something on uh, Wednesday going into Thursday. And I think it's going to affect us more than even the New York area at this point. Even the area further north of us might not get it as much. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the radar map uh, going into the uh, into Tuesday morning here because I'm going to be going to uh, visit my... Um, and this is the Tuesday it's already passed. So I'm going to be going to visit someone again on uh, that morning. So... Um, I, by the time you see this video, that storm will be passed. So I'll probably be telling stories if something happens. But uh, keep, an, keep an ear out for stories if something happens. I'm going to leave the uh, last video in this series unrecorded for now so I can tell any stories if any happen as soon as I get back. But that video will publish literally exactly one week after that storm. Being given a warning for something. I'm going to assume this warning is not important. Do we have a temporary yellow up ahead? Is that what that is? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, no, we have a flashing yellow. Yeah, we have the uh, junction indicator. That's right. We have to remember that. I was going to say we weren't warned for that one, but we just got it. And I have not been slowing down, so I'm putting a step two brake on all the way in now because I have not been slowing down. That's, uh, I'm sure it's normal to do this, but it doesn't feel like a good brake pattern with the way the brakes work on this train in the game. It doesn't feel like a good brake pattern. So I got down to 30 in time for the platform, which was my goal. Let's get it down to 20 now, and I'm going to ease the brakes off. Good enough. And we're actually going to need them again, so let's put them fully back on. Easing them back off. We are good for our stop now. Continuing to the end of the tunnel here, or the start of the uh, bridge area, rather. And there we go. Arrival at Hunt's Cross. Doors are open. Leaving Hunt's Cross. Our next stop is Liverpool South Parkway, which is the very next station, actually. We're also starting on the Metro Line at this point. The Metro Line will be continuing straight ahead as we go to the right. Not this right. So our speed limit will drop to 30 up ahead. We'll take advantage of the speed while we can use it. We have five minutes so we go one and a quarter miles right now. You can see the station up ahead on the map right now, which usually means it's about two minutes away. So knowing this, I'm going to actually cut off my throttle now because we're going to have to hit the brakes anyway. We're getting warned about those brakes. Actually, we're getting warned about the yellow, rather. I actually saw a uh, route on uh, UK Train Sim, which uh, unfortunately is closing apparently at the end of August of this year, 2023. Uh, but I found a route on UK Train Sim that appears to cover this area way back in an earlier time when it was all the same network and not a separate metro like it is today. And I actually recognized a lot, of, like I recognized Cressington, I recognized uh, Southport, I recognized a number of stations on that network. And it looks like the network runs as a single full network on uh, the MSTS version of the route, which is very, very interesting. I may have to take a look at that at some point. The graphics won't be anywhere near 
as good as this one, which it is MSCS. What do you expect? Um, but I will be very curious to see how that route operates because it would be interesting to see um, scenarios that take place in that kind of setup. It's too bad we're not going to ever have the Metro line connected to this route because I don't think we're ever going to have anyone who wants to create the Metro part of the route. Even if they did, they probably wouldn't need to include the Liverpool Lime Street segment because, you know, Hunts Cross uh, to um, the rest of the network is basically what you're doing, dealing with. Kirkby, for example, Southport, uh, and whatever else is on there. Liverpool Central. The Metro does, however, go through Liverpool Lime Street, so they could it could feasibly all be included uh, because Liverpool Lime Street is uh, under a circle and you'd want to have the scenery above ground anyway, so you'd still need to see Liverpool Lime Street. You could possibly replicate it using this version of the route and just add on all the Metro tracks. So this would be an interesting addition if uh, DTG were ever to get into the uh, Metro. It would be interesting to see uh, this route updated for uh, today, adding the uh, Metro route with it. That would be very interesting. I can't see DTG getting into the Metro, though. Metro isn't something they can easily get licensed. Mersey Rail, I think, is very, very... Um, they must be finicky with their licenses, because if they... If they were more than willing, I think we'd probably have the Chester route through Liverpool Lime Street at this point. We don't have that yet either. And we actually have the route at Chester from Crew. So there's, I guess Mersey Rail must have something against being represented or something like that. Or it might cost too much money or something. I don't know. It'd be nice to get some Metro. Metro would be fun because you get all the uh, station stops. What can you do? So I'll come to a stop right here. Doors are going to be open here at Liverpool South Parkway, platform number two. Back in the cab of the class 158, let's take a quick peek outside for just a second here as we go to... Uh, pop out of the platform here. You can see that we are four platforms here, but if we go high enough in the sky, you're gonna see there's another set of lights. So let's go a little higher over on that side. So these lights, as you can imagine, are, are where the tracks split off there. This is now the Metro line, also going through Liverpool South Parkway. So we have a Liverpool South Parkway on the Metro line. If you don't believe me, let's just head over here and it will show you Liverpool South Parkway for Liverpool John Lennon Airport. And that's what we have here. So. We're going to go ahead and turn around and head down this track, hopefully staying on the track and not veering off. At some point we carry along, you see more lights here. These lights are actually another station. These lights are for Cressington, which is on the Metro line exclusively. If we then continue along on the track, we see the track does come to a buffer end as the route does end for us at Cressington. But this is a station we should never see anyway, so it's not a problem. We're, we're never going to be going that way. We don't have Metro trains to utilize that network and there's no uh there's no other platforms on that line the line uh ends at hunt cross hunts cross so we only have hunts cross to crestington for metro anyway perfectly fine so leaving liverpool south parkway on our side uh we're going to be continuing our journey to our final stop at liverpool lime street scheduled arrival time as you can see is nine or sorry 7 30 19 30 we're about five and a half miles away we are going to uh finish with a flourish so to speak 80 miles per hour is our speed limit we're probably not going to reach that because we're going to get dropped before we uh, ever get close to it We're now within five miles of Liverpool Lime Street. We actually are getting close to 60. 60 miles per hour, that is. I'm going to provide uh, 
text below for uh, these stations again. Mossley Hill, I believe, was this station here, that or the one that we just passed. I'm not, I didn't catch which one it was, but I think it was that one. But I will go ahead and add a subtitle for all of them anyway. Any station we don't stop at, I intend to put a subtitle on. Coming up to 70 miles per hour. In fact, we're over 70 miles per hour. But I'm going to go ahead and shut the throttle off at this point. There's no point to gain any additional speed. We are on an uphill. We need to slow down anyway. So I'm going to let the uphill do its uh, work for us. We're going to have to slow down a good chunk of that, though. We're now three and a quarter miles from Liverpool Lime Street. We're stopping today at platform number six. We're getting warned about the 45, actually rather about the 30 up ahead. So we're going to go ahead and apply a little bit of a brake application now to help with this. We still have lots of time before we actually have to slam those brakes completely on. But we're going to go ahead and uh, behave anyway. So yep, yeah, now we're going to put number one brake on once again. Ease the brake off again for a moment. And we made our way down to 30 miles per hour. In fact, I'm going to take a little smidge more off just to make sure I stay in the limit. Because there is a down... Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a little more off because there is a downhill gradient coming up. So I'm going to take it down to about 27 for right now. And we're going to see what the downhill gradient opts to do to us. Right now we are on level ground. We still have seven minutes to make our stop. We are only about two miles away. So this is a fairly simple task at this point. We are indeed moving up to uh, 30 miles per hour as we rejoin the chat moss route. Brakes didn't want to work for a second. And I think this is where the chat moss rejoins. You can see the tracks on their far right. So the route leaves us at uh, after Manchester Oxford Road and it rejoins us here. That route does exist in Train Sim Classic. However, it does not exist on Steam. The route has not been brought to Steam. I will be honest though, it's a route I'd love to see brought to Steam. Like if they would uh, get that route set up for Steam and bundle the, the bundle one of the 185s with it, that'd be great for scenario use on Steam. And for use in the Steam Workshop and on other routes as well, like the Leeds to Huddersfield to Manchester. Would love to see that, no lie. So we're going to re-enter a 30 track here, but I can see there is another downhill gradient up ahead. So I'm going to leave the uh, speed load. I'm going to let the train decide when it wants to speed up. I'm not going to do it for it. So we are now in the 30 as we go through Edge Hill. There are no other platforms between here and Manchester, or uh, sorry, and Liverpool Lime Street. We're now on what is considered an iconic entryway into Liverpool Lime Street. 
Train is up to 26 miles per hour now and increasing. We're going to start getting yellow signals. Worth noting that the Liverpool station layout has changed. If you didn't hear my earlier preamble, track track number one on the northmost end, the northern, I just call it track one, but it's the northernmost track. Uh, it's gone. It's like, you can actually see it on our map and I'll just bring it up briefly as I get my speed down a little bit. So as we look on the map right here, not there, up here, this topmost track is gone. The yellow track that you see there is now the track that serves platform number one. And platform number two is still served by the other tracks. So basically, um, all the platform numbers have gone down by one to accommodate the fact that the topmost platform is no longer in use. A couple of cab roads also now serve platforms. Uh, so there are literally, um, at least I think that's how it works. It looks like every lane serves a platform as far as I can tell now. So... The station layout has changed significantly, and I would say, I would argue that's probably for the better in this case. So we should be there in about another couple minutes. We need to get our speed down to 15, at which point it would take us uh, about half a minute to go, uh, right, it would take us two minutes to go half a mile is what I'm trying to say. Mm, you get that speed down a little more. We're on a downhill gradient, one in 146, and smoothing out. It was actually steeper than that a moment ago. I think it said 129. Now it's a, now it's a one in 729, and four digits, so not even significant now. So uh, our headlights have been on this whole time. In case you were wondering, you see they were on. We are now under the rule of the 15 miles per hour as we... Uh, search for our entry ahead to Liverpool Lime Street. There are no additional uh, signals. That yellow was our last signal. We're a little over a tenth of a mile from the entry to the platform. Now, I don't know if there's any emergency brake protocol for the, end the, for the uh, entry to the platform here, where if you pass at 12 miles per hour or higher, it will screech you to a halt, thinking you're not paying attention. So just to be safe, I did bring my speed down to 12. I should be okay at this point. There should be no uh, emergency application here. We're going to go ahead and just cruise in. Is that train an active service? It is. You can see underneath it says class 158801 underneath under our uh, indication of the platform. And there's the sun again. Lights in the train are very, very bright as you can see. I would say unnaturally bright. I'm trying to get to a point where the lights are not killing my eyes, but I don't think we're going to have that point existing here. We might have to just settle for eye murder at this point. There's an info board here, so clearly this area is meant for passengers to get off. Gonna continue just a little bit further here. We're gonna get the buffer into the window. And I don't necessarily need to go all the way up, but as long as I get it in the window, I should be fine. That'll do the job nicely. Arrival at Liverpool Lime Street, platform number six. Let's look at our train as the scenario finishes. 
Well, that's the end of another one. We have one more journey through a storm. I'm going to go ahead and swap the Armstrong Powerhouse model in. Just have to check first, make sure I do actually have it installed. Uh, if not, I'm going to have to get on that. Uh, but I want to swap that in. I want to see uh, if I can give you a tour of that train preceding the final scenario. So we are going to take another good look around the train with the Armstrong Powerhouse model in place here. That is the intention. Uh, in the meantime, uh, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You have successfully completed all of your schedule stops. Well done. And uh, off to the results screen to see how we did, which uh, I think we know at this point. But uh, I will see you on that screen in just a moment. I got a pair of achievements here, and I actually have to verify what they are. Uh, Run for Your Life was, I think, the 700-point achievement, but the 4200 achievement, which I'm going to have to double-check on my menu, uh, is the one that covers all of these scenarios where, you, as soon as you get 700 on each scenario, and by doing that, you would have 4200 points on all six scenarios. So it assumes that you uh, have done that, and I still have one scenario to go, and I've already got that because uh, it's easy to get full points on these scenarios, no problem. So 4200 is easy peasy in this case. Um, so run for your life was the scenario achievement. Let's go ahead and just verify quickly. I'll go to the uh, menu and verify for myself what the other one is. One second here while I confirm that. And if I do a search for Liverpool on that menu, I will tell you what the name of that other achievement is in just a second. The other achievement was called Standing on the Sol on the Shoulders of Giants. That is the one where you get 4,200 points and you are good to go for uh, your achievement there. Whatever happens in the last scenario, even if you do a horrible job, you've already got that achievement, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and clear that last scenario. We are going to go ahead and get that full achievement string done. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and edit the Armstrong Powerhouse train in. I'll go ahead and make sure everything works, and then I'll flip it and slip into the place of the original one, at which point we're going to go ahead and run that one as the official scenario because, hey, why not? Let's have a little fun with it, right? That's the objective. Have some fun with it. And it doesn't hurt anyone. So we're going to go ahead and run that. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for your part of the world. Tune in next time for that scenario. I don't know what I'm going to do after that yet. I am back to being uh, live with you, by the way. The uh, last four scenarios I did tape ahead of time. You can see my score now, 181, 770. Uh, if you go back to the other videos, I was down at 170 at one point, I believe. So I am back live with you. I did tape these first few scenarios in advance because I wasn't sure what was going to be happening with some other content with Simrail at the time. Uh, now I am caught up with all those Simrail videos. I can say the Simrail videos I've done so far have all been posted. And uh, we're going to uh, get this last scenario here done before we move on to something else. I don't know what will be next. I'm looking at some Train Sim World content, uh, especially something that came out just recently, uh, the Trenton route with the Acela. Looking really, really nice. I'd love to give that a whirl. I don't know if I'm going to have that for you in the near future or not. But I am definitely looking at that. I definitely want to give that one a run because that looks like it will be an interesting U.S. passenger route. Even though it's, I don't know if we have it as is in Train Sim uh, Classic. If it, if we do, it doesn't look anywhere near as good. I want to see if I can actually run that route and try and do that for you. So I want to try and get that. I'll let you know if I'm successful in getting that, and we will give it a run if the time comes. Uh, other than that, I'm going to uh, eventually pick out something else to run here, and I'll figure that out when I get back from uh, my trip. After, around the ice storm that we're expecting. So uh, I'll figure that out later. Again, it's already gone by the time you see this, but I still have to think about what I'm going to do next. So like I said, have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is for your part of the world. I'll see you next time for more Train Sim Classic. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.